We'd be going amiss if we didn't say this is Captain Jack on his trademark champion. It's all about that Graves, you know, one or two nerfs ago, and the champion still a very strong pick in the current meta. Yes. Even though, you know, with, with some nerfs every now and then, but yes, Captain Jack, very much a well-known Graves player there, so kind of nice to see him in his armor here, and I think Azibri Blaze is going to make a lot more out of this game. I mean, both teams have fairly strong mid-games, I think, and so I think, you know, if one team gets an advantage, we could see something start there, and other than that, if uh, if we do see one team get, you know, if it's even, sorry, we're going to have absolutely giant explosion of team fights at about 20 minutes in, so. Very interesting game here, and you know, this is a must-win game for Azibri Blaze, both, both these next games are. So we'll see if they're able to pull it out. Gonna have a, they've got a lot of work to do here, if they want to get there, get themselves to IEM Singapore. But certainly not a team known for giving up. So we'll see exactly what they can make of it here. Just a very aggressive start from uh, Leona here. No fairy charm or wards. Yep. So really wants vision. As much as you can have. That's the last boy there on Leona. And there we are. There's the first ward. Gonna get placed down near the enemy wraith camp. Give them nice vision there. So do you feel like you your confidence go through this lineup from uh, Azubu Blaze without having to look at your notes? We'll see. Well, we'll give it a go. All right. So for Azubu Blaze, goes on your right. If you are just joining us, Azubu Blaze are on your right for this game. Your red team. That's uh, Captain Jack there. The probably the most well-known player from the team there. He's going to be playing Graves. We've got uh, Helios there in the jungle. He's going to be playing Lee Sin. Zillion in the mid there is going to be piloted by Ambition. The support is Lost Boy, and up in the top lane, the newest member of Azubu Blaze is Flame. Very quick study this pastry time. He's get used to it. And we are going to have a red invade. Focus the calendar, to focus the camera right on Aurelia here because I think she might be taking a red. This might be a double red. It could be the double red start here. Dragus has actually barreled at Skarn. It's actually starting on this side. So I think they're going to have to want to wait and oh try boy. and pick somebody off. There they go. Great Zenith play there into Small Brain. And the kick as well from Helios is doing so much damage. And there goes Corky. And the second kill there is El Zara dies off to the side. Passive. And this is a completely different blaze than we saw the first game. Yeah, and you know, it, maybe it's the magical Lee Sin that's doing it all here for them now. Certainly looking a lot better here in this game. And there's and yep, red buff. All red buffs secured. Actually, no, Aurelia might have had leashing problems. She's very, very low and did not get the buff. So she might. Have, that must be a miscalculation from uh, from Flame. There, he must have done something wrong because he definitely did not get a buff. Yeah, I think we just call that awkward. <laughs> Because that's very certainly awkward. something very, that very Flame awkward. would have liked to have. He's going he's to obviously start losing CS now as well. And yeah, I think... Uh, no gold to buy more items. And just picks up the pot to make up for the pot he used. And enters lane 100 health down with only 3 pots. Very unfortunate for Flame there. And look at look at this as a result. I think they may have had an inkling of what might have been going on. But Dandy's actually going to steal away the red buff now. And what should have been just a master stroke of a level 1. I mean, they still got the 2 kills. But this is very, very unfortunate for... As it was and there we are, red buff to Skana, Dandy clears that out. And yeah, I mean, the way it was drawn up, it's like take both... Blue hits a quick level 3 and Skana, you know, has no buff to counter jungle, but did not work out that way, unfortunately, and now... Uh... And this is the part where you have to kind of calm yourself, because even though they got those two kills, it'd be very easy to be frazzled at this point, start shouting at each other, you just have to take it back. You got the two kills, it mostly went to plan. You're in the advantage and go for me. Look at this zillion with blue buff in the mid, from the start. With that flat AP, it's 42 AP already. He is just going to boss around this Gragas like no tomorrow. Yeah, and you can just see him really being aggressive here. Standing in front of his minions as he goes back and forth. Just trying to do as much damage as he can. And poor Mima. Yeah, Gragas is going to have to have a long period here where he just basically has to farm with his barrels. And he's going to get quite far behind. You can already see there's 10 CS difference currently with 5 to 15. And yeah, Zillion is causing problems right now for poor Gragas. You know, once he gets more levels into barrel roll, he's going to be okay. But... For now, he's really just got to sit back and take it, because he's just going to get absolutely bursted if he tries to get any closer to Zillion. Meanwhile, on the top lane, you can see Flame pushing fairly aggressively here as well. Lots and lots of blades. So, is there a and he's, on the when, once he gets this minion wave, he's going to be about two-thirds of a level above Aurelia. Yeah. It looks like they were equivalent in XP, but there is a big discrepancy because of minion waves. And a lot of damage being dealt there, actually, to Hong. Aurelia comes in there doing a nice little chunk there. I thought she was going to go back and pick up a ward for herself. Skana was looking towards the top lane as well, so it looked like a pretty nice move, but Flame continues to harass here. And it seems to be his MO when he plays really. He likes to get aggressive early on. And here. look at this, the, the ward they put down to secure the kill does spot Skana, so they do have extra information about Skana right now. Which is good, I mean, that means that they can continue playing aggressively in top lane if that's what she wants to do. And the, these two games we've seen Flame so far, he's really come up strong here early on in Aurelia and just really tried to 
get just get a kill almost and really establish dominance in a lane. So I think this suits Flame style what he wants to do. I think in the last game, you know, he got a little bit too eager and yeah, the trades didn't quite work out. And then there was those brutal ganks as well that came in for Nocturne. And yeah, it just kind of fell too far behind against Toga. Right now against Jax, having a time of her life. And the, uh, the aggression continues here for all lanes, in fact, for Zubu. Graves, uh, as expected, is pushing his lane pretty aggressively here against Gorky's arrow. We're almost at that point where Grag is going to... Uh, sorry, uh, Zillion is going to start going crazy against Grag with that ability to push. Yeah, to start running. Almost level 6, you know, that global experience buff, helping his team out. And uh, the, the tower dice he can pull off at level 6 are just obnoxious. Yeah, but in the top... No, Dandy is going to come up here. Nice blade surge there, but a good lead strike counter strike there from home. And I think Rally's going to be able to get out of that using her flash. That was a really and nice now, series of play. here comes the 4-man turret dive. Yep, Lee Sin is already down. He's like, alright. You know what's up? Yeah, we know what's up. Oh, great scene that's played there onto him. He's going to back out of the way, but Smallbrand's taking so much damage. Safeguard there onto Leona, and Graves gets one kill there onto the plant lady. And Zillion's down here as well. I don't think Im can get away from this. Does actually manage to dodge the Q there. But Zillion's going to come in. Zenithlade's just out of range. Maybe he's going to execute himself. But no, there's the flash bomb there for Zillion to secure it. Whoa! Oh, that sucks. That's That actually shouldn't happen. That's weird. That one tick of... Uh... True damage should have gone through, but apparently it doesn't take instantly ticks after half seconds, so uh gonna feel very trolled. Yeah, nice dive here though for MVP. Not content with being the only team that gets the tower dive here early on. They're actually gonna pick up a rally there with a three-man turret dive in the top lane. But yeah, that was a very it ticks down, right? And it does true damage equal to the tick every second, but uh clearly that one tick didn't get through. I'm gonna feel a little bit aggrieved here, Ambition. Yeah, and Corky actually got executed there. I actually thought that it did one damage when you first use it. Because otherwise, because before it didn't used to draw tower aggro, and so they basically I, it fixed it. It must be so one damage after a second. Yeah, because clearly Corky got executed there, so. But it definitely does true damage ticking as it counts down. Yeah, a wasted flash there as well. Oh, that's just got to feel so brutal. Cillian has to feel quite robbed there. If he just flash autoed, he probably would have got it. But he flash bombed instead. I guess thinking what we thought, that that would be enough, but not the case, unfortunately. As we see two wards getting put down here near the Wraith Camp on the blue side. So both teams are going to have pretty good vision of that. And you have to say, I mean, two things kind of out of their hands, uh, stopping the a slightly bigger lead for uh, Zubu Blaze here. Well, you the know, red buff. Well, I mean, I say out of their hands. You should expect that red buff can be claimed at level one if you're trying to solo it. And the true damage tick seems like some sort of slight oversight. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, you know, they would have liked to get the kill on Corky, but Captain Deck is still monstrously far ahead in CS. He is just absolutely dominating this lane right now. You can see 25 to 62 CS down the bottom lane. And you know, this is part of the reason he's one of the most feared Graves players in possibly the world, certainly in Korea. Catch so him. what do you feel about this ward? I mean, they're, they're placing this ward here, uh, Azubi Blaze. Very interesting ward to give them vision when Skarn is going between red buff and his golems. In fact, he has... They have basically perfect vision yeah, of the, the bottom side ward, of the jungle. But that ward is going to run down. So they've got one ward here at the uh, try entrance to the raids, and one ward deep. So they have pretty much complete knowledge of Skana and the, in his own jungle. And the tribal ward as well. I, I really like it. Looks like Lee Sin's going to take a little bit too much damage. Just going to live there. The dragon burn not going to pick him off. I'm sure Zillion could have saved him if he wanted to. That's true. That would have been quite funny. Well, the execution wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. Just be there's, there's worse uses of the cooldown. Yes. And rewind helps a little bit there as well, getting that one back uh, back off cooldown. And it's interesting that you can take those really aggressive flat AP runes if you're going to rush that uh, that Chalice of Harmony now because uh, he's got Chalice first item with some Dorans, so he has the magic resist to take him away from 30 and the potential for true damage. And uh, Zillion's always going to boss Gragas early game, so I like that rune setup for Ambition here. Yeah, and that's exactly what's happened here. You can see uh, Mim has actually done a decent job of CSing despite you know being zoned. Only 10 CS behind, which isn't too bad. Double Doran's up for Gragas as well, and uh, blue buff now up for Mima, so feeling a little bit better. Level 7 now as well, so maybe looking to roam with that ult. I think I was actually looking for the red steel, but was spotted there by uh, Bazillion. Nice little ward there being placed by Zubu in that bush next to mid, so Gragas not going to get away with that one. Back down in the bottom lane, Skana, yeah, they know exactly when Skana's coming. And, I mean, it makes sense if Azubu players are going to play this aggressively in bottom lane that... You know, why shouldn't they have that much jungle water if they can afford it? It's because just unfortunate because Dandy's aggression has been the calling card, but also he started with that boots and mobility as we've seen him do every game in the jungle. And, uh, you know, with all this warding, he'd actually be a lot better served with the GP10. He would, but, you know, who was he to know that 
Basically every single part of his jungle is watered. I mean, this lane gank might be alright here. He's level 6. But we could see him meeting the mines down bottom lane. Yeah, he doesn't quite have flashback. I believe up. he has vision now, so that's good. Well, they saw this in there. Nice plants in the bush there from small brain will pick them off. And yeah, I think we are going to see another die. Seems to have an... Oh, so boy. Gonna know. Now. Nice defensive play there from Dandy, but yeah, there's nothing really else they can do there. They can't fight against uh, Captain Jack's BF sword here. Although he ha if he could get engaged on, he could do a lot of damage. If Captain Jack positions well, that BF sword damage, nothing comparable on the uh, Corky side. No. And, you know, Corky, known for his... His good spells and his good burst damage, but, you know, Graves the AD caster, especially with the BF sword. Known for doing a lot of burst damage himself as well, so... I mean, Jack's been absolutely dominating this bottom lane. Look at that CS difference! That is ridiculous! Yes, it's, uh... Wow, it's something that needs to be I... minimized, and that's why the warding's so smart, is because they're cementing what is already a massive lead. I hadn't even noticed that's a good point out there. That's insane. That, that was like, I can't believe that's actually happening. That's so ridiculous. Do not right. adjust your monitors. No, no, that is correct. But that is 60 plus CS ahead already. Poor Corky has only picked up 40 CS in 11 and a half minutes. Lee Sin now in top lane. Good try and look for a gank. Dandy was fishing up here as well, but... But I love that play from, from Lust Boy. He realizes, hey, this lane is going smashingly well. Let's keep it that way. Double ward their, their jungle. They're going to have massive, massive uh, advanced warning about Skarna's movements. And Imp's going to get uh, very much dove upon here. That tower's not much health anyway. Good flash away there. And a great solar flare, but no follow-up. And oh my goodness, that collateral damage. I just realized as well, Captain Jack has a 12... Well, sub-12 minute bloodthirster. That ult did a ridiculous amount of damage. And still continuing to try and deny Corky as much as possible. Captain Jack drags it all the way back up here, and I mean, you know, he played pretty well in the first game. We'd have to say, I think certainly played, you know, the best of, of any member of I his team. I think of in game all one. the players and his uber players, Captain Jack, he really never lets you down. No, he puts on quite the show, and he had, you know, incredible CS on Cogmo in the first game with some fantastic positioning. This is just if they try and force a dragon fight and he doesn't get Skarna pulled, he is going to do obscene damage. I don't even think Skarna can really stand up against him either. If Skarna charges forward, he might just get carded and killed. Like Skarna has zero tank items right now. He's finishing up his first GP10. I'm, so I'm so Ian afraid. in the chat is asking, how did Corky get so behind? We saw that roam gank from Zillion, that pressure Zillion put out, and the level 1 action meant that Captain Jack's been ahead in this game from about the 30 second mark. And he's just snowballed and played the lane very well. And Leona, when your AD carry has great presence down bottom, especially the tanky Graves, is just such a good zoning tool. You can't get close to her because she's a little bit ahead in lane, and uh, the experience as well is a subtle thing, but Zillion, oh, as Leona comes in mid here. Yeah. yeah, nice flash away there from the small brain to get out of it, and a good defensive ult there as well. Well disengaged. Yeah, just making sure that Lee Sin... Well, what I was saying was the, the, the Zillion passive with Leona, Leona ahead in levels, like, her level three is one of the strongest of any support. Three ability, at one point in all abilities, she has a lot of lane presence. She's gonna get that faster with the Zillion experience. And the invade's coming out again here from Imp. He's diving onto the uh, red buff, but I think he wants Dandy instead. A great solo flare there, almost getting a stun, but there's the Zenith play to follow up as well. And the Captain Jack can get into position. He's gonna do so much damage here. Lots of damage being dealt out to the rest of MVP as well. And that Zillion ult does save, uh, does save Helios' life there. And that's not actually gonna get them any kills, unfortunately, but it will secure them this red buff. Which is kind of what they wanted to do in the first place. And wow, it even goes to Captain Jack as well. Just to get him even more ahead in this lane. So we talk about CS record with uh, mid laners more often. Captain Jack has got some sort of precedent going right here. 127 minions at 14 minutes. He hasn't missed too many. No, he has not. <laughs> Doing very, very well. Right, looks like we've got trouble Zillion. Yep, we're going to get chased down here by Harm. I think that's it. And there we go. Big night there from Jack's ticks off. He actually bombed the Wraith before he died. But I don't know if he picked up any gold from it, but... That was a nice little move. I don't know if he was aiming for Jax or not, but, you know, if he's gonna die, you might as well bomb the minion, see if he can get some. It's kinda like when Cogma dies and, you know, you just run into a group of minions with your passive. <laughs> Same with Zara as well. Always fun to watch. That's it's a nice heavy of gold to pick up for uh, Zillion. It's, uh, so for Jax, and Zillion was doing quite well. Yeah, and Dandy now. I think this is maybe they a killer onto flame. Yep, there's one leap strike, but Dandy needs to get in range for the Impale. He does get in range, but now he's actually towered out of the Mimer over the top. Doing quite a bit of damage, and Dandy's gonna get it turned around on him. 
Taking a lot of damage here as Lee Sin chases him. There's one. Is it going to be two? Skana tries to get out of it. The no, minions. Nobody else coming to support here, so Skana gets away. Oh, great body block! But there's the safeguard. It's not going to be quite enough. He jukes it though. And there's the kill there using the E from Lee Sin. No skill shot on that one. Doesn't have to worry about it. No, I was about to commend him for the amazing skill shot, then I forgot. That E. Yep. Too strong. That E. No problem. Skana, Skana juke the Q, could not juke the rest though, and Corky's in so much trouble. In fact, um, I have to say a little bit disappointed with the Mima gas. They didn't really get it going as we see uh, Graves and Leona pick up another kill down bottom. Yeah, not, too far, not too far behind in CS, which is nice, but yeah, it just has Pain hasn't... continues down bottom, pastry zone. Yes, Corky, in fact, that was uh, Zara that they got killed. Zara also one of the supports where if you get engaged on it, it just feels very awful. Well, they can just take Dragon here. They're happy with where the lane is at because uh, the moment that. Uh, Corky shows his face down bottom, they'll just transition there and try and blow him away. In fact, that tower in bottom lane has 100 health left. And that's They're in no rush. No. I think it's fair to say lane has gone pretty well down bottom for Azubu Blaze here. Yeah, I mean, Captain Jack, is, that is 100% intentional. They are trying to continue deny Corky CS for as long as they can. Every time Corky tries to get near a minion, he gets I, very close to being If you look killed. at Captain Jack, he's absolute last hitting every minion to make sure it doesn't push. Yeah, just waiting for basically the longest time he can. Just going to continue to deny here. I mean, it's 144. They're quite comfortably 2v1, 1v2 of them as well. Yes. I mean, we're getting close to 100 CS ahead territory. Which is just... At 16 minutes. At 16 minutes. That's unthinkable for most people. Skirmish in the jungle, though. We're going to have a rumble. And looks like Gragas there throws out the barrel. A lot of damage there. Nice bomb action under the least in as he charges in. But Hum around the back here as Flame comes around the side as well. Dandy could be in a little bit of trouble. There's the equilibrium strike. And there's the damage. And impaled to his doom, no doubt. Azillion comes in there as well. It's now 4v2 here in the jungle. And Jax is trying to get out there with his leap strike, but there's going to be a slow. There's the bomb as well. And down the bottom again. Super players are continuing to get kills. But a fantastic kill trade for Corky, you have to say. Even though it was 2v1, Captain Jack did leave with a kill, but Corky picking up the extra goal because uh, Captain Jack was doing very well for himself down but The overall trade, though, across two sides of the map is actually 3 to 1 in favor of Azubu Blaze. So, I mean, you know, Jax. Got to be pretty happy dying there if you know, the rest of his team picked up a few kills there in the jungle. Ooh, very aggressively only here. In fact, it's going to be a solo kill there. Wow. Support on support there. And last so four picks So how much damage up. did Leona's full combo do there? Did you, did you see it? Was it about 300 damage? It was quite a bit. It was enough. I, I wasn't quite sure how much, but yeah. Very clinical play. I like it. It's really nice from Leona. She's got a decent amount of bursts. Especially when, you know, poor little Zara has barely any base stats to, think, to speak of. Especially when she's two levels up as well. Yeah, definitely helps. I got, I just, I just, you know, that, that zillion passive is one of the great intangibles of this game. A lot like Janna. When people were talking about balancing Janna, a lot of people always can't, could never lose sight of, hey, I really hate that passive because I might miss out on kills or I might get caught because of that passive. Yeah. And zillion's experience with a champion like Leona who scales on levels more than most supports is proving to be very, very important in this game. It's nice. And we talked about auras in the last game, you know, kind of invisible and tangible things that just give you so much of a benefit. Those types of passives are basically free auras from level one. And, you know, it doesn't seem like much, but it adds up over the course of the game. You'd certainly rather have that than no passive. And yeah, as you said, Leona has strong support with levels. It would have been interesting to see if nicely. she took the 5% from Masteries as well for 13% bonus experience. Next time we see a zillion, we're going to have to check these things, aren't we? Right, yeah. yeah. We're going to have to know. So there's people really wanting to kill this Aurelia up top. Yeah, there's a few people hanging out. Me and Marin Hom, just chilling. Oh, whoa, what is going on? Never mind, jungle invasion. Poor small brain. And Lee Sin continuing to wreck this red side of the jungle. On the blue side, which could be a bit confusing. Impure is just farming a Mad golem. fight up top, man. Yeah. Jack vs Aurelia, I mean, not quite a man fight, but you know, about as manly as it gets. I think Hom's actually not going to win this one. And Flame, they're doing quite a bit of damage. There's the flash. One auto doesn't quite have enough. And Blade Surge there. Blade Surge, five seconds on cooldown yeah. still. Far too long away there for that one. But I mean, despite all that, Azibu Blaze still continuing their incredible amount of pressure from the bottom half of the map here. And this tier 2 turret is not long for Spud. Captain Jack, he's done zoning. He's done denying. He is, in fact, oh my goodness, he's actually 100 CS ahead. That is ridiculous. Yeah, 100 CS, 2-1-3 two, two, to the zero three one. Oh boy. Top tower goes down as well as Flame picks that up. Dandy actually in a bit of trouble here. There's Blade Surge. A bit more autos coming through. Zillion speeding himself up. Wants to find it. Almost max range. Q there for Helios. And now the speed up there for Zillion. Great impale though. Dandy playing it really right there. And that's a great ult as well from Mima. There's J actually. No, sorry. Zillion not being popped there. 
They have the same particle and a great defensive ult there. Yeah, ult misses down bottom. I think it was mainly just to protect him, but you know, gets most of the job done. But a nice, nice clutch play there from both teams actually. No one dies though in that exchange in bottom lane, in top lane, sorry. And they still the blue. Yes, exit with the blue. Not too bad. And Captain Jack continues pushing turrets. Works his way almost down to getting that mid turret down. Not quite yet though, but still very scary. Has got to have basically a phantom dance finished at this point. He's just really accelerated his build. I mean, actually, what's the gold difference between Corky and Graves? I have to know. Oh, that's hers. It's going to be a bit depressing. It is. It's three and a half thousand. So I guess the only Graves. other marker left for us is the double the uh, gold advantage. It's coming soon. Yeah. We're already 10,000 in the lead right now for Zibu Blaze, a number we often say is uh, usually the death knell for any team. Even at like 30 minutes, but at 20? Yeah, 20 minutes And it's, it's almost all on that really scary Captain Jack. And you know, he just he knows what he needs to do right now. Yeah, I think Phantom Manta should be up pretty soon. Up, oh, QSS instead. I like it. Just playing safe. No reason for him to get Scarlet. And that's rolled. a defensive item, even with Zillion on the team. You could forgive him for going for just the pure Phantom Dancer there, but uh, he's not taking any risks this game. Well, the thing is, you know, with that pickup, what is Captain Jack afraid of now? The only thing you mentioned earlier that could have been a problem with Skarnazol, and now that's not even a problem with QSS up. I mean, Jack just has nothing to be afraid of right I'm now. I'm gonna put this out there, base time. This, this Graves with uh, 195 CS. 213 with those items, he's not afraid of anything. No, certainly not anymore. The one thing he may have been buff. afraid of. Yeah, you got blue buff. All the buffs. I imagine he'll be taking a red buff fairly soon. Probably the enemies. If the Zebra Blazer's pattern is to be continued in this game. Looks like Aurelia's in the top lane. Two v two right now. Decent solo flow there from Lost Boy. Homs taking a lot of damage, but Aurelia's getting pretty low here. Can't really get out of it with all the slows, but does pick up a kill there onto Jax. And now turns it around. Zillion in there as well with the bomb and such a massive slow. And that's almost gonna, yep. Basically one shot Skarner from that health there. And this game has just all been all the Zubu Blaze. They've just come up with the answers every single time. And there. you have to say, I don't think it was the draft that was a different space you time. I feel like a different Azubu Blaze showed up to this game. They did. And I mean, if we have to think of any real change, is it is it Lee Sin? He he honestly seems like He's like jinx at this point, but in a good way. Cause it seems like whatever team gets him seems to win. And he is certainly the, uh... He's the, the lucky uh, charm, the maybe. Rabbit's foot, isn't yes, he? he is the rabbit's foot. As we can see Dragon now, being picked up by Zibu Blaze. This is gonna be, yeah, practically, completely uncontested, in fact. Boots my ability least in as well for extra aggression. I like it from Helios. Oh, uh, look at Zillion. Poor small brain. Oh my goodness, one bomb. Poor oh, small hell. brain. And Lee Sin, yeah, comes in there, does a little bit of extra damage, picks up an assist. Oh, nice actually dodging the passive, they're using his ultimate. Zillion stays alive. Oh my goodness, so much health. Yeah, already quite a bit of AP. And Imp's now in a lot of trouble, Mim is going to come in on the Gragas to try and clean this up. But Lee Sin's not letting up, hits the Q there, kicks Gragas back actually into it as well. And Lee Sin, I think he's maybe going to die here, safe goes out to Leona. Solar Flare there just for the slow, but can't quite do enough damage there to pick up Gragas. And Dandy, yeah, he's not even going to come near this one. I mean, just all this pressure from Azumi Blaze. I think the one big thing it's done in this game that it didn't get to do last game was that it's given Flame a lot of time to just flex his muscles here in top. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like Hum has, fine, has had that dominant laning phase that he's had in all their victories so far. He's had that presence tough that could never be denied, but Flame this time, despite that shaky start, despite the, uh, the, the level one misplay, is... Uh, is definitely able to stand toe to toe with Jax. And Dandy has just not been in the mix this time in top lane. He has not been around. He has not been able to give Hon the assistance that he just It's loves been the to relevance get. of the jungler in the top laner that I think has made MVP and a very, very solid play by the rest of the line. I'm not to take anything away, but the jungle and top lane presence has been undeniable. And this game, marginalized the best. Yeah, and that's all due to Azubu Blaze's just plan from level one. Lee Sin continuing aggression there. Red does go to Captain Jack yet again. He picks up the. Uh, the MVP White Red, he's gonna be happy with that. Looks like we could have quite a fight here. Impale there onto Jack, but he immediately QSS quick draws out of it. And he's doing so much damage right now. Homley's jumping onto him as well. And the rest of them actually could be seeing a little bit of trouble here. Nice ult there from Zillion actually, so Jack gonna get an extra life here. He does go down there, so he will finally go back to probably full health at this point. And that basically free GA is gonna make this fight so much harder for the rest of MVP. Graves picks up Jack, Imp is gonna go down as well. And Leona still quite tanky, gonna chase down the supports here. 
And when the dust settles, it's going to be 5-1. to one. There's Graves with the last the kill. And I am not surprised in the least here. Azubu Blaze just cast themselves an absolutely incredible advantage. Approaching 20,000 gold ahead there by the time that game was uh, drawing to the end there. And MVP White, they're going to have to go back to their drawing board. This time it's 1-1. And we've had two...